Hey guys, welcome back to the Fig Tree. Today is the 14th, Wednesday, 2021, moving through the month of July. Long story short, I wanted to report on this X-Class solar flare. Um, I'm not sure if the Carrington event was an X. I don't even think they had any tools to, you know, to tell what it was. But the Carrington event, if, it, if that was to happen today or tomorrow, it would be, in a, it would be equivalent to an EMP, maybe worse. Um, just the amount of solar discharge energy and lifting up our heads and, and really, really paying attention as to what's going on. Uh, like, for example, uh, South Africa. Um, you might have been hearing about the unprecedented mass writing. Um, really, really bad stuff that's going on over there. We need to be praying. You should be praying either way. Um, but uh, not good. So, um, and it doesn't take an X-class solar flare to knock out the grid. And if the grid goes bye-bye, and if we go dark, you're talking about something catastrophic that no one has seen in our generation. Again, everything runs off of electricity. Smartphones, pacemakers, hospitals, um, stores, coolers, refrigerant, um, even getting your faucet water, unless you have well and a manual pump, um, which costs lots of money, by the way, to, to put that in. It's like $10,000 or somewhere, unless you do it yourself. So again, we're just not, we're not set up to endure what happened in the in the 1800s i think it was 1856 somewhere around there where this event took place and there was so much energy from the sun unleashed that they say according to the reports that nighttime was like daytime that you could see auroras bursting across all the skies um and you know there was no differentiating there was no distinction between night and day um crazy crazy sparks energy wild I've, I've seen this in dreams, I've seen this in visions, and of course I've also seen this uh, along with volcanoes erupting. So uh, it's it's crazy, I, and that's why, you know, I've been really, really hard-pressed to share the message of repentance, to turn to the Lord, because there's a reason why all of this is coming, there's a reason why this is happening, uh, and of course this, that's another creepy thing here, not only is the mass rioting, but this whole you'll own nothing and be happy and be happy you'll own nothing and be happy uh, the 2030 thing um, it looks like things are starting to really really rev up rev up okay so you know it's there's a tension in the spirit and I'm not seeing things being restrained you know um, and that's look for that restraining if it's not being restrained there's a reason why that the Lord's not restraining some of these events these are bigger events I believe those are markers, markers for a bigger event. <clears throat> and can you imagine, throw the rapture in with this? Let's say an X flare does happen. Let's say one of the fault lines go boom, pop. doesn't even have to be a big one. Just throw in two or three events and then throw the rapture in with that, and you've got global insanity unlike anything anyone has ever seen. Of course, that'll start the revival. People, oh my goodness, it's real. They saw it with their naked eyes, or maybe they saw the dead in Christ shoot up out of here. It's going to be wild. Uh, and then throw that on top of X-class flares, fault lines, earthquakes, tsunamis, and all of these things are being just the reports. I, I read something else about some kind of a uh, uh, just too much, too much to keep up, <laughs> too much to keep up on. But uh, I wanted to share that. Um, I, I really did um, because this is something that seems to be increasingly growing stronger and stronger and stronger and and it's a good a good kind of tension but a, a sober one you know sorrow mixed with joy and happiness and I just wish more people um, would repent um, and uh, they haven't they've chosen their cup and uh, they've chosen the wrong cup it's kind of like that Indiana Jones movie where it says you have chosen poorly <laughs> you know um, people choose and they make again it's it's about decisions and, uh, and let's just rehearse real quick I never want to leave without sharing a Bible verse and why is this happening some people oh God is so mean how could he let this happen I thought he was love alone I thought God was grace alone why is this why is my faith alone God allowing this to happen? Where is he? And it's like, well, you need to understand and enlarge and uh, increase your horizon. Have you read all scripture? Did you know that it's God breathed from Genesis to Revelation? Um, God has a problem with persistent unfaithfulness. 
He always has. You can read about it. Um, you can read about it with Israel in the Old Testament. Moses, you know, Samson. You can read about it in the story of the judges. Deborah. Okay, you can read about it where it's essentially the story of persistent unfaithfulness and how God is with long-suffering enduring the vessels of wrath and then bringing his own people back and then raising up a champion to bring Israel back and then raising up another champion to bring Israel back. It's the same story. And even with the wild branches, okay, it's the same story. But of course, there is a bigger uh, scenario where God deals with nations as wholes. We can read about that. Let's see if I could find that for you in Ezekiel. Ezekiel, this is, where are we, chapter 14. It's important. Um, because again, we're talking about hybrid followers of Jesus Christ. I don't, I don't, it's not just hybrid Christianity, because these are hybrid followers. You know, Jesus said, eat, eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. My words are spirit, they're life. He talked about ultimate intimacy. And then, like, literally the next verse is, and many disciples left. They departed. It said many. Many disciples left Jesus. See, we, we think that this is an anomaly, that uh, in the last day of the, the love of many shall grow cold. The great falling away. Well, it happened when Jesus literally walked the earth right in front of his faith. Christ, the man, okay, the Galilean, the one Mary's son, that guy, okay? They literally left him to his face. He gave them the ultimate intimacy of um, of discipleship, uh, of a groom between a bride, um, he he laid it out for them. He you know, and, and they knew what he meant. He wasn't, you know, he said, "My words are spirit in their life." You know, I, he wanted himself to become a part of them, his followers. It just wasn't enough that they followed him, but it was it was more than that. My words are spirit; their life. I am the door. I am the way. I am the bread of life. Feed on me. He he told us so much about what he was as the new Adam, okay? Um, but being a hybrid disciple, this Jesus was getting, he was, he was separating the wheat from the chaff, even when he was walking alive 2,000 plus years ago, he was doing that. Um, there was even groups of people that, Hosanna, Hosanna, and you know, and um, entire groups of people that he would speak to them in parables, and the disciples, you know, why are you talking to them? This? What's going on here? Why are you talking to them in parables? Why can't you speak openly? And Jesus looks at him and goes, well, seeing they do not see, hearing they do not hear. These people aren't following me. He even told one group, you're only here to get more food. You're not here for my words. You're here to see the miracles. I mean, come on, it's the same today. We call it hybrid disciples, hybrid Christianity. These are the many, and many disciples departed from the Lord, and they followed him no more. It literally says that, parakalatheo, they followed him no more. It's the, it's the total opposite. Jesus said, follow me, and they followed him no more. All right? So you can do, the, you can be a part of that many, and many followed him no more. That's why he says, many, I tell you, will seek to enter, and they won't be able to enter that narrow door. So the Bible talks about persistent unfaithfulness, and this is why the sun is acting up. This is why the, the fault lines are about to go boom, and why earthquakes are going, shattering records of Mud volcanoes, underwater earthquakes, we have a dust bowl, 130 degree heat, um, people are ill nationwide. I mean, it's, it's completely unprecedented. And yet, in the middle of all this, you still have people that are, are in a spiritual coma, okay? They are unfeeling, you can't touch them. They're completely, they're gone. It's going to take something huge to wake them up, and that's coming. I mean, that could come any day now. But this persistent unfaithfulness is real. This is what the Lord was talking about. Um, he talks about this unfaithfulness. Thus says the Lord God, repent, turn away from all your idols, turn away from your idols, turn your faces, here it is, from all your abominations. Turn, 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 turn from your abominations. It's a big deal. For, for anyone of the house of Israel or of the strangers who dwell in Israel who separates himself from me and sets up his idols, listen, in his heart. This is where it is. He sets up his idols in his heart. This is why it says they're going to throw their idols of gold and silver in the streets. Okay? Again, you can't eat a bar of gold, more, more importantly. But 
um, people can make an idol out of anything. And people are setting their idols in their heart. And puts before him what causes him to stumble. Okay, now unto him who can keep you from stumbling. But people are putting before them that what causes you to stumble. That's why it says that. People are being separated. Who separates himself from me and sets up his idols in his heart. And puts before him what causes him to stumble into iniquity. Then comes to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me. I, the Lord, will answer him by myself. I will set my face against that man and make him a sign and a proverb, and I will cut him off from the midst of my people. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. And then we get into this persistent unfaithfulness. Verse 12, Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, when a land sins against me by persistent unfaithfulness, it's persistent, not a one-time thing, See, when we stumble, Jude, Jude, read Jude. I think it's the first chapter where it says, Now unto him who, who can keep you from stumbling. See, when a truly born-again creature of God, you're running the race, you're fighting the good fight, when we fall, it's called a stumble. That's a spiritual accident. Get up, repent, bench press out of the mud. Don't stay there. Because that's what delineates you from someone who returns to the dog's vomit and loves it. Okay? And they pant after that. And then they crown that mud as their first love. Just like Ephesus. Okay? But Ephesus was very difficult because they it was their ministry. They actually had a fabulous report card. Many of us don't even have that. We just have another heart love, a mistress. That's hybrid Christianity. It's repulsive. It is offensive deeply to the potter. Okay, And so would it be for you if you died on the cross for someone and then they just spit in your face after that or completely denied that you did anything for them or worse. So this is what's happening. This persistent unfaithfulness. I will stretch out my hand against it. I will cut off its supply of bread, send famine on it, and cut off man and beast. This is what's happening, by the way. And even if these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, they will deliver only themselves by their righteousness, says the Lord God. All right, And then he keeps repeating this. You know, he keeps repeating this by their righteousness. They would only deliver themselves by their righteousness. Only they would be delivered, and the land would be desolate. And he says it again. They themselves would be delivered. Okay. Then he says it again. They would deliver only themselves by their righteousness. Okay. He keeps repeating this. It's like three times. One, two, Three, only they would be delivered. And the they is the Noah, Daniel, and Job. Okay, God gives a hypothetical situation here. Even if these three men were in this nation that, per, what, that demonstrated persistent unfaithfulness, even if Noah showed up in all of his greatness, right? Daniel in all of his grandeur. God loved Daniel. Job, there was none like him in all the land, God said. Even if these fabled legendary figures showed up in a nation that demonstrated persistent unfaithfulness, only these three people would be saved by their righteousness, by their devotion. Abraham's righteousness, his faith, was attributed to as, as, as righteousness, okay? Because his faith was pistis. You know, God said, Abraham, follow me. Come on, I want you to take everyone. They, it's action. And Abraham could have said, I know you're God, and I know you showed up, and I believe that you're God. But you know what? I'm going to, I'm not going to follow you. I'm not going to obey you. I, I'm just going to, you know, maybe you can pick me up and take me to the land yourself. I just don't want to walk. His faith had pissed us with it had action. Faith without works is dead, just as the body is dead without the spirit. So faith without action, deeds, calories, and movements, obedience, right? That's just basic material. Abraham had that, and God said, this man is righteous because he obeyed. He persevered. That's why, you know, he, he held fast God's word. And that, to God, is, is considered righteousness. Now, we're the church, born at Antioch, born and conceived of the Holy Spirit, begotten again by God's power, God working on our minds and our hearts to his good pleasure. We're God's craft. We're God's work. Okay. Um, but he calls us to run the race and fight the good fight. We're saved by grace through faith, gift of God, not of works. No one can boast. Amen. It's fabulous. We have a narrow road to stay on. He, tell, he says this in Hebrews chapter 10, My soul has no pleasure in the ones who go back. Second Peter 2.20, Ben 
bench press out of the mud. Don't stay in the dog's vomit. Get up. That's what separates the men from the boys. Stay on the narrow road. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit. The potter working in us. There's such a delineation between the foolish virgins and the wise. The ones who buy gold, the ones who don't. The ones who have oil, the ones who don't want anything to do with the oil. All right? This is the persistent unfaithfulness. All right? And God repeats that. It's, it's almost like the, it's the same thing that he was repeating in Romans 1 here. This, but only they themselves would be delivered. And yet you have three people, three different uh, giving over. They, God gave them up to do those things which were not fitting. And God gave them up, and God gave them up. And here he's saying the same thing, but only they themselves will be delivered by their righteousness by their faith by their movements by their obedience no i'm going to flood the world to build an ark no it didn't say you're bluffing you would never do that you're too gracious um you're bluffing i don't believe you peter unless i wash you you're bluffing lord i don't want to be washed <laughs> do you really have to wash my feet nah no nah, I, don't, I don't know i will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean nah i don't want any water don't want a bath this is what's going on and the Lord says, I will prune, I will chasten, I will correct. Okay? Um, but this is why these things are happening in the world right now. Because a land, the world has sinned against the Lord with overwhelming, persistent unfaithfulness that dwarfs Sodom and Gomorrah. Maybe a hundred times over. So much more. Maybe a thousand times over. I can say that because Sodom and Gomorrah didn't have a church on every street corner. They didn't have the complete and total finished work of God himself called Christ, who came in body, died, rose again. And um, the, the, the degree of accountability that is going to be extracted and, and demanded of the people of our generation is going to be beyond anything that you can imagine. The severity is going to be through the ceiling. Um, and there's fear there. There's trembling. And, that, and that's a part of the intensity that I'm sensing in the spirit. Uh, sorrow. This is a difficult time for me, uh, and I'm sure, I'm sure for so many of us, you know, especially the wise virgins who are new creatures, we're born again, we have a new heart. God took out that heart of stone, that heart that said, I don't care about anyone but me, myself, and I. And then God goes, really? You wait till I see you. You wait till I'm done with that heart of yours. Give me a month. And we'll see what kind of person you end up. Oh, you want to follow me? Okay. He takes out that heart of stone. He gives you a heart of flesh that's pliable, starts to feel. He puts a new spirit in you. He puts his very own spirit in you. It's actually two different things. He puts a new spirit in you. You're born again. He recreates your spirit. Then he deposits you with the burning fire of the Holy Spirit. God himself moves into your apartment. It's amazing. You have a great team. You got the true vine. You got the vine dresser. You got God, the Holy Spirit. And now all three are working. And then all he asks, stay on the narrow road. Because he has an appointment with us to bear fruit. And he also has an appointment with the world because of their persistent unfaithfulness judgment's going to start at the house of god it's, ha it's happening now that's why some many will be left behind few there be that find it many will seek to enter a door that they won't be able to it brings me no pleasure to say that but that's what god's word says few there be few few many are called few are chosen and you look at what's going on i mean that's the restrainer peeling things back in south africa X-class solar flares, that's the restrainer pulling things back, allowing that, just taking his hand back and saying, okay, I'm going to start to allow some of these bigger events to happen. And the more and more of these, one after the other, boom, 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 one thing leads to the next. Um, so eyes open, no fear. Perfect love casts out fear. We should have our eyes on the rock from whence we were hewn. Um, focus on Father. And wanted to get that out. Uh, serious, sober time. Look, I wish I could come on here sometimes and just give you guys all, you know, rainbows and sunshine and give you the good lovey-dovey messages that so many of these pastors do. Everything's going to be great. It's revival. Uh, and, you know, you get the goosebumps. And I don't, I don't have that today. Um, it, these are serious times. I don't know how to deliver messages like this when I see, I know what's around the corner. He's shown it to me and I'm accountable for that. I mean, seriously, I'm accountable for what he's shown me. And the more you're shown, the more you reveal both in his word, you're accountable for that. And, and then, so it's, and not just that, but it's, it's a heaviness that comes with it. I know what's around the corner. I know what's happening. I know why it's happening. And I wish there was more that I could do to 
just to spread God's word, to, to warn people. But again, we're coming to the point that even for those foolish virgins, they don't want to hear, turn away from sin. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. They're downright nasty and mean. <laughs> um, it's simply because they, they want their idolatry. They want that, you know. But, you know, we love and we pray for them. And there is a huge revival coming. It's going to be amazing. Um, but yeah, persistent faithfulness is huge. Look, guys, even the demons believe and they tremble. It's not enough. I mean, a demon isn't going to follow the Lord. You know, a demon is not going to love and abide in Jesus. Only born-again creatures of God will follow para, the master. They will follow. But we have a whole generation, a fleet of pastors, mainstream Christianity that says, you can believe just like the demons. Just believe. Faith alone. That's all you need. The demons have faith alone. What separates you from them? Come on. This is repulsive. You should know better, but they don't. Because anything more than simple belief means deeds, calories, movement, tenacity, striving, persevering. That gets into their quality uh, leisure time of me, myself, and I, and moral degradation, and just living out their lives. Look, you don't have to be a terrible person. Just don't follow Christ. Just just don't abide. Um the Bible is quite clear. It's very narrow, this word made flesh. He says, let all those who name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. That just ruined your party. Sorry, you're not following the Lord and you want to fornicate, do drugs, sleep around, debauchery, full-time, uncensored, lawlessness, or partying. I mean, pick your, pick, pick your poison. There's only a million to choose from, right? It's a big deal for God. Yeah, so even the monsters believe and they tremble. What separates you from them? It's pistis. Your faith has actions to it. When God says, I don't want you to do that. My kids don't operate that way. They don't talk that way. They don't slander. They don't gossip. They, do, they repent. They're striving and running the race. To, to They're not saved by those actions. It's what, it's what happens because they're running. They're born into something. That's why the Bible says that. You know, we're new creatures. All things are new. Old things have passed away. All things are new. Put off the old man, the Bible says, over. Put off the old man. Put him off. Put him off. Um, it's like, no, the old man's my friend. Uh, what's so bad with my heart of stone anyways? You know, uh, it's, we've built a culture of just completely tolerating the old man. Oh, his heart isn't desperately wicked. I'm offended at that. Well, you don't believe the Bible. Yeah, so what about it? Well, there's a problem with that. God's word is true. He exalts his word above his name. Do you know how great his name is? It's only the greatest thing ever. And his word is synonymous and on par with that. It's exalted. He is the word made flesh. He can't separate them. Again, I've said it before. I woke up to it a couple months ago. And I heard in my spirit, you can't extract grace from the person who gives it. You can't separate the two. You can't. You can't take grace from the from the person who gives it and then run away from God as if you own the thing that he's trying to give you. They're connected. Grace is activated in your life and it looks like something. The Bible says that grace will teach you godliness, soberness. It will teach you righteousness to pant and run after God, to turn away from lawlessness and idolatry, to turn away from the things that God hates because the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all, A-L-L, all unrighteousness. And this is why we have this persistent unfaithfulness in a hybrid Christianity. Just this form of godliness without a shred of power. Holy Spirit's not there. And they're doing whatever they want. They're having their Sodom and Gomorrah heyday. And maybe it's not as, as grotesque as that. Maybe they're just doing them. They're just living their own life without God. Uh, I'm going to leave it at that. I don't want this to turn into too long of a, but I wanted to just share that. Uh, I'm seeing the sun act up a lot, a lot. And I've had a ton. It's just, God has really showed me quite a bit about this. Um, and some of the things that I'm seeing, um, it's that I've seen already, it's starting to happen. And the sun is going to play a major role in the great tribulation. All right. Um, Re Revelation chapter seven, verse 16, they shall neither hunger anymore, nor thirst anymore, talking about the great tribulation, the tribulation saints. They're not going to hunger anymore, they're not going to thirst anymore, and the sun shall not strike them, nor any heat. This is a single sentence given that when the tribulation saints show up in heaven, 
They've been martyred, okay, and they show up in heaven. And it says, and God shall wipe away every tear. And then right after it says, and God shall wipe away every tear, it talks about, let's see if I can read it to you, the whole chapter here. Uh, it's chapter 7, where it talks about this, how they're, yeah, that God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. It's verse 16. They shall neither hunger anymore, thirst, the sun shall not strike them, nor any heat. All right? So it talks about this. They, they show up as he who sits on the throne will dwell among them. This is the tribulation saints. These are the ones who come out of great tribulation. They come out of great tribulation. And a little clause that you hear about these people that come out of it, is that the sun shall not strike them. How can the sun, it's like the image of the sun reaching down and slapping them in the face. How is the sun striking them when it's a million miles away? And then it says, if you still don't understand that, it says, nor any heat. What it's saying is this, the sun is going to strike people with heat. And God is wiping away tears from their eyes because they just went through hell. These, They were martyred. They were... Maybe they were killed off by this heat, or the, maybe they were killed off by a, a solar flare. Who knows what they went through? But it's in the Bible that the sun won't strike them anymore while they're in heaven. That the one who, sit, who sits on the throne is among them. Of course, they're in heaven, and the sun isn't going to be hitting them anymore. And that's what it says. The one who sits on the throne is dwelling among them. The sun won't strike them, nor any heat. For the Lamb who is, who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living fountains of water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Why are, they, why are there tears in their eyes? Because they went through hell with sun, with the sun striking them, and people's heads being, I mean, peace taken from the earth, millions of people dying. I mean, it went, it's, again, it's, it's going to see the world's greatest revival, but it's going to be terrible. People will enter it because they don't want the narrow road. They don't want the gold. They don't want the oil. They're not persevering. They have a hybrid Christianity, lukewarm abomination um, and some have been lied but honestly it's one thing to be lied to and it's another thing to pant after that lie you want it they've heard the truth they don't want the truth they want this persistent unfaithfulness because they can play on the fence hybrid and it is hard it is narrow god said it would be narrow right difficult is the way the bible says narrow it, it, it doesn't it's very honest Okay, it's not supposed to be a hybrid play both sides of the fence. <laughs> um, so yeah, I wanted to share that, and um, it's exciting. Um, it's it's exciting. Um, it's sobering. It's profoundly sad. Um, it's many different emotions. At least for me, it is. It's all bundled together, you know. But you know, it's just moving on from one phase to the next. I mean, after this. There's the God panting after Jacob and running after and getting them back in and God, you know, reining in the wild branches and uh, things are going to really pick up fast. And I'm really excited for that. I'm really excited for people to come to the Lord. So it's not just death. It's not just destruction. It's not just X-class solar flares. No, no, we're all going to lose power. You got to see past that. You got to see past the, the humanity. You got to see, you got to see right into people coming to the Lord in droves. It hasn't happened yet. You got fools out here running around saying, Revival, rub, revival here, and it's going to happen. It, it happens after the rapture, after the sudden destruction. It happens in the middle of it. And, and of course, you've got false prophets who have been saying this for forever. This person is going to come back and save the day. The biggest revival is going to happen. You wait. Uh, or the preterists saying that God doesn't need to return, and we need to usher in a golden age, and then we give the whole planet to God. It's like, no. At all, no. Um the Lord is returning. It's not a matter of who's right and wrong. Bible prophecy has to go forward. There are certain things that God spoke that he has to do because he said it. He doesn't lie. He's faithful and true. You know, he doesn't He doesn't spin us along and say, oh, wait, I'm just going to give them a little riddle here and uh, see if they get it. Um, and, and then we're all confused. And then he doesn't do it. No, he doesn't do that. He's faithful and true. And his word is exalted above his name. I mean, that's just what the Bible says. If he says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. Now, the timing is interesting, and it, it's the honor of kings to search out a matter, the Bible says, and we should be doing that, and that's exciting too. You know, um, Samson loved riddles, and he gave out riddles, and I think the Lord likes riddles too. Um, and he's waiting to see who's going to watch and pray, look up, and lift up their heads. There's got four verbs there. Anyways, I'm, I'm monologuing again. I'm sorry. 
So yeah, I wanted to share this. Yet another sign, another confirmation for me personally. I have never seen or heard of an X-class solar flare in the three years that I've been tracking sun activity. I've never seen that. I've heard them talk about it. It just happened a couple days ago, and they're like, oh yeah, X-class flare, and all I fell out of my chair like, what? Like, <laughs> I was like, are you kidding me? Is that why I like, oh man. Uh, yeah, I literally lost it, and then I had to regain my composure. Uh, I've heard of an M-class flare, but an X, I think it was an X one. And of course, there's an article saying, oh no, there really wasn't an X-flare, and India's wrong, and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, come on now, everyone's talking about this. Uh, and it's not going to stop at just this one X-flare. This is just the first one. It's going to keep going. I, seeing things that have usually been restrained, he's just stepping aside and letting it happen. Uh, and he's perfect when he does that. It's not like he's like, oh my gosh, it's an X-class flare and I didn't know about it. He is perfectly controlling and allowing and timing things. He, he has it right down to the individual because the Lord is a man of war. And because of that, he's a tactician. And because of that, I mean, there's strategy. And his strategy is to save as many souls as he can, even in the Great Tribulation. So there's souls to be saved. Exciting. And I pray that you're in on that, because this isn't over yet, even even after the rapture. I mean, there's going to be praying, and there's going to be a whole lot of activity. Okay, there's a marriage supper, there's wonderful things, but this is just the beginning. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. Jacob, the wild branches, a whole bunch of people coming into the fold. Um, and then we ride back with the Lord to put all this evil down. Are you kidding me? Be a part of that. It's going to be epic. Um, so yeah, I'm going to leave it there. Please pray my strength in the Lord. Uh, please do that. I'm praying for you guys. Look, no one's an island. Uh, we need to be praying for each other. Um, we truly do, especially as these things heat up. Um, yeah, this happened. This was real. This was just a couple days ago. I, uh, it's almost a pinch me moment. I was convinced, and even in this, God is restraining because an X-class flare can wipe everything out, first of all. Um, and the news will never tell you the truth. They're going to downplay everything, just like they down, they downplayed the Carrington event, but they'll tell you the truth of, that if this event was to happen in our time, it would black everything out and it would be lights out. <clears throat> but we're not going to get a warning for this. This is why I'm on here warning now. You won't get a warning. This is why India is the only one of the only places talking about this X-Class flare. Go to India, India Express News. I'll, I'll see if I can put a link up so you can read about it. Um, we won't get a warning. This is why the Lord said, look up. Lift up, watch, and pray. If you're spending time with Daddy, you're going to know. You're going to feel it in your soul. That time is close. Don't listen to the liars. Just a couple days ago I had that. Um, so we need to stay in prayer. Fasting and prayer is great. If you haven't, if you're not fasting, now is a great time to get into that because you're going to need that additional um, surge, that additional closeness with the Lord. All right, be an Anna and be a Simeon. Have the courage and zeal of Phineas. And pray that the Lord's return is sooner rather than later. And I have a feeling that it's sooner. Just a little hunch. I don't know. It's exciting. Anyways, may he return. The Spirit and the Bride, they say, come. And I pray that you're praying that as well. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Maranatha. Be well, guys.